to Danny DeVito. to come and say a few words um, by way of um, an introduction for, um, for Mr. DeVito. I, my first thought was, uh, was oh, well, why me? Uh, there must be an awful lot of people out of town this week. But, um, but my second thought was, um, he's just, um, he's such a hero uh, and he's such um, a legend. And um, if, 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 uh, the history, like cinema, is is uh, if it's only a hundred years old or something. Danny has been at a at, at the <laughs> <laughs> Danny has been there. Um, he's been there for uh, for forty years, um, make, making so many brilliant movies. And um, uh, like I told my dad, I was coming here this evening, and he. Uh, he was talking about Louis from Taxi, and he was talking about Martini from One Club of the Cuckoo's Nest. And I grew up on, I went to the, uh, in the 80s and early 90s and everything, and just so many great movies, like Throw Mama from the Train, and uh, L.A. Confidential, and um, this, you know, this Ruthless People, but I mean, the list is too huge, as Tin Men, all, all the, the great movies, and then Batman Returns, and Twins, and all these movies, every movie I went to, Danny seemed to be in it, or uh, have directed it. But, um, just for such um, for such a, an amazing um, contribution to uh, to the the art form, um, he's been a huge hero of mine, and um, we love him. We uh, and everybody loves him for different movies, but uh, there's a there's a darkness um, that I really like as well, and um, in the choices that he makes and the characters that he takes on, they're. Um, Somehow they're endearing and they're alive and they're brilliant and they're dark. Uh, at the same time, there's an energy coming through them um, that that I've always loved, and it's always seemed to me that um, he clearly loves uh, movies. He clearly loves making films, and um, he's been um, and and <laughs> he's a he's a legend, uh, Mr. Danny DeVito. <laughs> So on behalf of um, on, uh, on behalf of the Dublin Irish uh, Jefferson Dublin Irish Film Festival, um, Dublin International Film Festival, um, for um, a lifetime um, in in movies, um, the Volta Award for Mr. Danny DeVito. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. It's an honor and thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. I noticed you said dark many, many times, which is true. <laughs> He's an evil fuck. <laughs> okay, it's, thank you. More than really, I like the little wingies too. These are like, is it going up or is it going down? <laughs> okay, shall right, I sit gonna, down? Yeah, right. We, Very nice. We've got a couple of people prompted in the audience. They said they had loads of questions, so we've got a bit of time. So hands in the air. Over there. You get a mic to you in about two seconds. Mercy. Damn it. Pick up. <laughs> it was nice to see the end of the movie. It was really fun to see Michael and Kathleen die. <laughs> Hi, Danny. Hi. So, um... My question was relating to, um, previously, prior to this movie, you and Michael and Kathleen worked in Romancing the Stone and Jewel of the Nile, which were very different in tone to this movie. Yes. So, when it came to casting this movie, did you have your heart set on the three of you returning, or at any point did the studio say, you know, the audience might think they're going into another Jewel of the Nile, you know, we want three different actors. Did you ever have that, any difficulty with that? Uh, no, it, it wasn't exactly that. What, what happened was, uh, I, I, uh, I found the script, Michael Leeson wrote the script, and I found it, and uh, threw my hat in the ring to try to direct it. I really loved it and uh, wanted to do it. Had a whole feeling how I wanted to do it, and I thought of Michael right away. Going to play 
uh, Oliver. And um, I sent him a script, which what, the way you do it is uh, you, know, you send the actor the script and they look at it and see if he, he called me right away. He loved it, he wanted to do it. And about a, a day, maybe two days later, I got a phone call from Kathleen. And she said, I'm going to kick your ass if you don't cast me in this part. And I said, oh, you know, God, I, I thought, of course I thought of putting her in the movie. But, uh, she really went after it, like in, like in a violent kind of way. <laughs> and, um, and then I, you know, I started thinking that, like, you know, some of my, those great films, uh, Fritz Lang and, uh, you know, think of Scarlet Street and, uh, you know, Woman in the Window and uh, movies like that where, he used the same cast over and over again. I actually had fantasies like afterwards uh, continuing to do movies with the two of them. But since I, you know, tortured them for three months, they wouldn't speak to me again. So. <laughs> Another hand in there? Oh, I think we need this, this guy here. Oh, okay. We'll go with that guy here. <laughs> Hi, Danny. Um, I just thought uh, Mark mentioned about, you know, Darko. Um, even with children, what attracted you to Matilda? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well I, I do tend to like things, you know, that are that have like a little bit of an edge like that, you know, with Fro Mama and um, I was uh, I have three children and we were reading all the picture books at night, and then the girls, my two oldest kids, uh, uh, they were uh, like not ten or. They brought this book to me. I didn't know about it, and uh, they loved it. They, we read that like every night as a chapter book, that kind of thing. And uh, the three kids I have, and uh, they all sat around. We, we read it in little installments, and uh, I thought it would be so great to do. Um, perfect for Rhea and I, you know, to play the evil parents. Nice. <laughs> and uh, Pam Ferris is the trunch bull. It was really good. And anything I could do to make it scary. You know, the whole idea of it is uh, uh, when you were a kid and you watched Snow White, you know, when the, the original one, the one with the, the Disney one where the, the witch gives, uh, gives her the apple. It's the scariest damn moment. You know, you just feel, God, it's just terrifying. And then, of course, so I, I, I don't know. I just gravitate towards stuff like that. I like, I like that kind of irony and, and uh, like to make fun of stuff. You know, and so that's that's basically it. And I do have that, that little dark side that you all know about. <laughs> Here we go, front row. Uh, hey, Danny, big hey thank um, you. Especially, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Oh yeah, it's always sunny, huh? Yeah. Uh, that's the show. And we just had a question. Fucked up show. <laughs> <laughs> it's really crazy. I mean, we love it. I love doing it. It's so much fun. I yeah, just had a question on. Yes, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's me, man. A real mess. Um, did you have much uh, I input just, into development? Yeah, or? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I just wanted to go farther and farther and farther. You know, it's like the thing about the, it's in the first uh, season when I was in it. They, they did one season before I came, and uh, there was a great line where I, where it's, you know, Frank just wants to live in squalor. You know, and he really wants to, you be at the baseboard of things. You know, really, at the, and so we try to push that envelope. You know, so I've done pretty much. Everything. We're going to go into our ninth season starting in April. And, uh, you know, just see, and I'm a, like a bit of a perpetrator of that kind of thing. I encourage, they're, they don't need encouragement. Those guys are as sick as can be. You know, uh, Charlie and Glenn and, and, and Rob and Caitlin also, she's contaminated. <laughs> but the, uh, it was an a, a interesting story, you know, I'm always saying to them, Let's, you know, let's get farther out, farther out, you know, don't worry about it, we're going to have some fun. People are going to really dig it. And they, you know, everybody agrees. One, one year, I started to tell the story at dinner tonight, but I, I, I had to save it for you guys. Oh, we, they always give me the scripts to read. It's kind of, it's kind of a cool thing, you know, and I can put my two cents in. So one day, and I was in the middle of summer, we were about to start, and one day, um, I got a script in the morning. I had already read... 10 or 12 scripts uh, that they, but this one they were just like, you know, I had to read this one today. I had to do it in the morning. 
I got to know by noon because we're going to use it as the first episode, right? And I go, okay, okay, take it easy, you know? And my assistant gives it to me and she says, Danny, you got you to do this. They're, they're really all, all over me about this. I said, God, all right. So I get a cup of coffee and I sit down. And I, and I sit down and read the script because they didn't want my first scene, right, in the bar. It's just the way it always is, you know? You know, it's written exactly the way always the scripts are written. And all of a sudden, Frank is going to go out. And he's going to go get a hooker, okay? <laughs> so I, it's fine. They, you know, they're doing some other inane thing, you know, some stupid thing. And I'm going out to get a hooker. So I go out, and there's a scene with me and this hooker, and I get her in the car and immediately get busted, okay? Cop comes, takes me for soliciting, brings me to the jailhouse, right? And it's a, this is the beginning of the script. Then they go back to them. I don't know what's going to happen. Next thing that happens is, right, I'm in a shower, okay? I'm naked. I'm in a shower. And a guy puts his hand on my shoulder, right? And takes me down right there. Butt fucks me right there in the shower. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And so I got the book. Well, I got it already, so I can say this. Okay, so now I'm going, like, you know, I'm starting to like, what, you know, because it was a little graphic. You cut back to the bar, and they're doing all kinds of crazy things, right? And you come back, and I'm, like, in the prison uh, yard now. And I'm terrified, looking all around at it. This is just, you know, screen directions, right? right? There's no, hardly any dialogue except, oh, ugh, yeah. <laughs> I walk out, and there, in front of me, uh, I see a, a, a bunch of white supremacists, okay? Skinheads, tattoos, uh, swastikas, the whole thing. And I go over to, you know, make friends with them, because I'm afraid of these other guys who are going to, you know, rape me. Now you cut to, right, back to the bar. And I'm going, man, this is like, I'm saying you gotta push the envelope, but this is like crazy, man. These guys are going nuts. You cut back to the prison, yeah, we'll take care of you, but we want you to meet Lefty. And there's this scrawny guy, and takes me in the room, and they're all watching while he butt fucks me. <laughs> Go back to the bar. Now I'm getting really nervous, right? The whole show is going back to the bar and then coming back into the prison. And now I'm like laying there. I have just been totally turned inside out by these guys. And I'm laying on a cot. This is like in the la almost the last scene. By now I'm thinking I'm calling my lawyer. There ain't no way I'm doing this, right? I said, my God, these guys have really, I've turned, turned them loose. Cop comes in, cop, right? He goes, uh, Mr. Reynolds, somebody's posted your bail. I said, oh, oh God, you know. And it says in the script, you know, Frank is a struggles to get up and all of this stuff. And he's walking. The cop says, yeah, but you're not going to go before you say goodbye. <laughs> so you cut to a room, and there's all these cops around, and one big guy is butt fucking. <laughs> And now I'm like laying on the floor. I'm exhausted, totally can't move. And it says in the script, he looks up, the guy leans in and says, April Fool, bitch. <laughs> so they wrote this entire 33 page script or whatever it was. We never, there was no intention of ever doing this. They were just breaking my balls. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's the kind of thing I'm dealing with with these guys. Question over here. Hi, is that Nick? Um, you, uh, How long have you been a bishop in the church? <laughs> Sorry. No, you emphasize the fact of how much you are into dark themes and yes. scary and all yeah. this, but one couldn't help but noticing how beautiful that movie was. Oh, thank you. And it was such a pleasure and a feast, a feast, 
and you managed to show this ugliest thing, the divorce, yeah. so beautifully, and this furious woman, she was so graceful with her anger. Yeah. So, do you consider herself deep inside, or maybe on the surface, um, an aesthetic? Aesthetic? Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I admit to a lot of things, but I'm not sure I want to admit to that. <laughs> what the hell is it? What am I doing? Um, uh, tell me, can you, can you translate that to me? What is she sorry, doing? Wayne. And it's deep. Oh, really? Oh, God. I don't know. I mean, I've never been called that before. <laughs> That's I a compliment. Love... Thank you. I know. I'm trying to be funny. <laughs> uh, the thing about the, the idea of making the movie really, uh, uh, I love the idea of like, you know, I draw, make, all, do all the storyboards and try to do, uh, you know, the different transitions, you know, that, that make it pleasing to the eye. And, uh, and so it, it's a, it, it lends itself to that kind of like opulent kind of beautiful, you know, the, the furniture and the, the, the things they fight over, you know, the way people conduct their lives and, you know, um, so I'm happy that, it, it, that uh, to make the pictures pretty, you know, make them nice, you know, even though underlying, you know, there is like a, there's a lot of shit going on. <laughs> Couple uh, more questions. Ooh. Yeah, go ahead. There's always down the front. Yeah, there's one right at the back. Run! <laughs> is he talking to me? <laughs> oh, run. Oh, I thought so. You, was, you said that. Yeah, I said that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matilda because it was the first film I ever saw you in and I was just wondering um, if you could go back in time and make remake a film what would it be? Well uh, besides Simpson Kane let's see look, <laughs> what would I make? Uh, I don't know you know I mean one of my films I don't know if I would want to go back and uh, you know it's like you, you, you they're all you like your babies you know your kids so you know you fall madly in love with them and you nurture them and you do everything you can to support them and uh, and uh, then they smack you in the face. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm going to make another movie about a little girl though. I, I, you probably heard about this. I'm going to come back here and hopefully in a year from July and make a movie called The True Confessions of Charlotte Doyle, which I've been trying to make for a while and I came uh, a few days early uh, to Dublin so I can scout, look around, find some locations for this movie. So uh, that theme is uh, important to me to try to revisit uh, you know, a movie that has some kind of empowerment for kids. And uh, especially uh, you know, in, in the case of Matilda, it was a, uh, you know, a girl kid, but it could have been a boy kid. But uh, this is another girl kid. Uh, sure, I'll do it. And uh, you know, I think that that theme is something that's dear to me. If I can possibly do it again, that's what I'll, I'll work on next. Next question, one over here. Oh, we got time for two more questions. So uh, after this one. Hello, hi. Um, hey, yes. I, I was just wondering. Well, basically, uh, in it's sunny in Philadelphia. Right. And one of my favorite scenes is where you come out naked from the yeah. couch. <laughs> yeah. and, um, yes, I was just basically wanting to throw the offer out um, oh. <laughs> as to uh, whether we could get uh, maybe a, a reenactment. <laughs> Don't you wish? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think I would be able to, you know, without the, you know, the massive amount of, uh, you know, lubricant. Uh, you probably have it though, right? <laughs> I'm terrified to say it's another one at the back. Hi, Danny, how you doing? Yeah, good. I want to ask you about uh, film twins. Yeah. I believe the, the 
contract. You didn't take money up front. You agreed to take payment in the back end after the film. Right. <laughs> 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 no, what did he just say? We're not going back to the butt fan. He said yeah. I took it in the back end. <laughs> I'll move on from your butt. It was about uh, when you agreed that contract. What did you think? Did you think it was just such a great script, such a great script that you couldn't resist it? Well, the, the thing about twins was it was like a kind of a. Um, we did that. We we were uh, we were fortunate enough to do that because um, first of all, it was a unique kind of pairing, you know, the man and Arnold, and so you you got that kind of thing going for it. Uh, the script was pretty good, and then William Goldman actually, who's a wonderful screenwriter, came in and, and wrote uh, some additional stuff for us in the movie, yeah, in that, in that uh, situation. Um, and uh, it was a very unique deal, and it's a deal that the studios don't want to give anybody anymore, and I don't, I don't blame them. I mean, it was like we uh, shared a giant percentage of the movie between Arnold and I and uh, um, Ivan Reitman, who produced it and directed it. So we didn't take any money up front. We took some, you know, a little bit of money, just to, you know, like 20, 30 million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we just took a little bit of money up front, like very, very small taste of, uh, just to get, you know, like, so it was, because it was a Screen Actors Guild movie and all that kind of stuff. And uh, then we just shared the profits. And it was, uh, a deal that they don't want to, they don't really want to give you, because they, everybody's pining away about how much they're not making any money, but they really are making a lot of money, <laughs> you know. So it was a good deal, and I, I would do it again. <laughs> and you are doing it again. Well, we're gonna do it again, yeah. <laughs> we we try to do, we're trying to do, we trying to do triplets now. <laughs> we're trying to do that. We had dinner. Arnold and I had dinner with Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Great brother. <laughs> Okay, we've time for just literally just one question, just over here. Hi, how are you? Um, Hello. I just think that I'll never get this close to you again, so really? can I have a hug? <laughs> you want a hug? Yes, please. Sure. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Don't start me. Okay. No, really. No, that was uh, very, it was, uh, it was uh, very enjoyable. <laughs> I, 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 I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed it both times. <laughs> I'm afraid we're going to have to wind Stop. this up. What's that? We've got to wind this up now. Let's wind it up. Yeah, we've okay. got to do this. <laughs> got to do this because I can see hugs are now going to be the questions. Uh, That's the first question. Thing. The second thing is Danny's going to be on the late, 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 later even. So you've got a second chance to see him. But a huge thank you to Danny DeVito. Thank you very much.